Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It is Shazam Bank, your strategic life, relationship and intimacy coach. And today I am so excited about the topic we're doing. We're talking about the science behind a heartbreak. And in honor of anyone that is going to watch this, we have the cutest little guy here. And I just kind of feel like just staring at him and looking at him and wanting to get a cat this cute just kind of will solve all heartbreak problems. You'll kind of actually feel like, do I actually ever need somebody if I got someone that cute? So the first place I want to start is to really recognize the why. Why did we go through a breakup? A lot of the times people can fantasize breakups and want to just run back because they don't want to deal with the loneliness or ever feeling like the work of having to go into a new relationship. It just seems so daunting that I want to run back to this person and never deal with why. Why have we broken up? So step number one is make a list of the reasons as to why the two of you were not working. Why have we reached where we are? Either you're the person that ended the relationship, you will know the reasons that you did that, or you're the person on the receiving end of the relationship having ended. And know the reason that this relationship ended was meant for you. A lot of people tend to think or feel so much pain in the beginning of a breakup and the truth is you're gonna feel a lot of pain. You're gonna feel all that anguish because you got into a relationship never hoping that it would end up being a breakup. But I always like to say I love the fact that somebody called it a breakup because they didn't call it a breakdown. They said it's a breakup because if you hit rock bottom, the only way will be up. So when you're going through this breakup, you're dealing with so much pain, so much anger, so much sadness. And you know what, at some point, allow all of that to be able to come out as you keep in your mind the why to the breakup. The second step is to be able to actually deal with the grief, deal with the pain. It might start out as shock and it might start out as denial. And you want to be really careful in these two stages not to really fantasize wanting to run back to the person because you don't want to deal with the pain. Now, scientists have proven that there's the part of the brain that deals and is associated with physical pain is the same part of the brain that lights up when you deal with rejection or you deal with a breakup. And this is why the pain sometimes is physically so intense you want to curl up and just disappear from the entire world. I feel this part of dealing with grief is really, really healthy. It's not something you want to run from. You want to get through the denial. You want to get through the shock. You want to move into the sadness. You want to then move into feeling the anger of whatever could arise. And then at some point you end up leading into acceptance. Now, the stage between denial and shock and the stage between acceptance leaves you going through all these different emotions. So you, you want to be able to actually feel the pain. Now, when you're dealing with denial and shock and the last stage of dealing with the grief of the relationship ending would be acceptance. In between, there's no perfect row in which you have to feel anger and then you have to feel sadness and then it would be mild depression. You could feel anger for the longest time and then break down into sadness and sometimes maybe even not deal with depression or you could be stuck in depression and sadness and not feel the anger. There's no perfect way to grieve the loss of the relationship. There's just understanding that between the levels of grieving, you will hit acceptance at some point. The third way to help you get there faster is to really block them out block them on your WhatsApp, on all social media handles, and especially tell the friends, the common friends you might have had, because sometimes you'll have friends that tend to come more to your side or feel the need to have to inform you of what's going on. Tell them that while I'm blocking this person right now, I do not want to hear where they were last night, who they were with, what they put on their social media, or how they are handling this breakup, because they might handle it faster, they might handle it in a way where they're showing so much happiness because that's their way of just being able to move past the grief. And it will leave you feeling like you're stuck, 
you're not moving as fast as them, or it could even trigger you to feel, let me show that I'm happy and put all these crazy posts which sometimes lead to these crazy nude posts to show them what they're missing and the fact that I've moved on. I feel a breakup is no longer about the other person. You have broken up from them. It is now about you and you healing. So while you block them, the fourth step is gather the friends around you and say, I used to have this one person I went to when everything used to go wrong. I might need you to be the person I call when something great happens. I might need you to be the person I text when something goes awfully wrong. And I might just need a group of you at least twice or once a week right now where I can just sit, talk, break down and discuss this relationship till I feel better. The secret when you're going through these first four steps is sometimes we tend to fantasize everything that went right in the relationship. When you tend to fantasize everything that went right, you feel this urge to want to reach out to them and to text them because you're feeling good and settled in the body. Don't do that. Stick to rule number four, which is you completely leave them blocked because you are just going through the system that you want to make up and break up and make up and break up. You want to be able to do that on your own and not with them. If during this stage, they decide in some shape and form to reach out to you and tell you that they are missing you and they need you back in their lives. Remember, that's not information that is saying, I realize the mistakes I made. I realize this relationship could be amazing. We have work to do separately before we come back together. This is the person also in anguish and pain using you to be able to get through their grieving process. Don't be a part of their journey. You want to remember this is your journey to healing. I then want you to make a list of everything this relationship has taught you. Put some music on, pause this video right now, go get a journal and a pen and make a list of everything you learned from this relationship. You might be feeling so much pain. You might, instead of fantasizing about everything that was beautiful, you might be going through the trauma or reliving everything that went wrong. I don't want that to stay physically in your body. I want you to understand that even though many relationships will come to an end, this relationship served you in a beautiful way. And if it's come to an end today, it means that that service is over. It taught you emotionally, mentally, physically, verbally, and spiritually how to grow, and it has helped you grow in those areas. So number five is make that list of everything that was beautiful about that relationship, break it down into all those five areas, and then grade it out of 10. This shows you exactly where that relationship really stood in terms of your self-growth and your evolution. The other thing I want you to remember is, why was this breakup important to you? You might sit there feeling like, I'll never find somebody else like this again. But this breakup is about you finding yourself all over again. This breakup is going to be you healing wounds that will come up in places you didn't know you needed to heal. So I want you to make that list. That is step number five. Step number six is make that list of exactly why this breakup was necessary for your growth. Then I want you to think about the things that you didn't do in the relationship as well. I want you, step number seven, to be able to move from feeling like you're a victim of that breakup to really becoming responsible as to why this relationship got to where it is. Because remember, as thin as you slice it, there are always two sides. And you might have played a 20% role in the breakup and you might have been amazing the 80% of that relationship. But I want you to recognize the 20% that you weren't present or the 20% you held back or the 20% you caused the fights in that relationship or the 20% you brought insecurities into that relationship. This also moves you from feeling like life is happening to you like you are the victim of this entire breakup and it puts you into a place of power to recognize you know what i have places i need to grow to i have if i get into the next relationship 
I can see where my downfalls were. I can see where I could have taken more energy. And now I know what to give more of in the next relationship. The last step, step eight, is I want you to understand this is all about healing. This healing process is about you probably doing the things you never made the time to do when you were in that relationship. This is about the amount of times you put yourself second, you now get a chance to put yourself as number one. Healing means you come back deep within yourself and you sit through the pain, you sit through the grief, and you sit with the acceptance as well and say, I understand relationships or every single relationship that came into my life was for me to learn, to grow, and to be able to be a better person so that I can be a better person outside. If this relationship filled my cup to the level that it did, I'm grateful for where it reached. The key nobody really points out when you're dealing with healing in a breakup is the fact that when you walk away from healing, you wanna be able to set the other person free as well. You don't wanna hold them a prisoner to everything they did wrong because you're holding yourself as a prisoner to everything that was also wrong. If you look at a beautiful analogy of, you know, if you were to get a glass of water right now and hold it in your hand, if you held it for a couple of minutes, it's gonna be easy, there's nothing wrong with that. But try holding that glass in your arm for the hour going to start to feel a bit uncomfortable. If you hold that for a day, your arm's going to start to get some aches and pains. You hold that glass even longer now, put it into a month or six months or a year, you're going to have serious injury in your arm. And it's not that the glass of water is heavy. It's the fact that you just insist on holding on to it. And a lot of people don't realize when they're going through a breakup, you numb your your feelings and you don't want to deal with it and you want to suppress it and you will go out and you will drink or you will you know look for easy hookups to be able to just numb the feeling but I want you to be able to say I can sit with it healing means I'm going to deal with it healing means it will look ugly and feel ugly but healing also means I'm getting to know myself in this process Healing means I'm getting a chance to go deep within and say, I choose myself. I choose my self-worth. Healing means that this breakup doesn't mean something was wrong with you. It means it just served to a point it can no longer serve anymore. And I feel that's the most beautiful way to look at it. It's not to put the other person down and shame them. It's not to put yourself down, shame yourself and feel guilty about it. And the last step, is be really careful about not pulling the villain out in your head. Don't be the villain against the person you've broken up with. Don't be the villain against yourself. Pull out the superhero inside of you that actually needs to shine. The part of you that has got through so many different challenges in life and this little hurdle is something you can get through. And I say it's a little hurdle and I know right now in your life it feels like your whole world has come to an end. But I promise you, research has shown in three to five months, things start to feel better if you do the work to actually heal. Physically get into some sort of movement, get into the gym, get on a bike, join a group that's doing yoga or Pilates, find a support system that's healthy, that doesn't have you talking about this all the time. Put this energy into a new project that you've always wanted to do. Get into that career zone, put the energy into work right now. Let, because remember, whatever you're feeling works as energy. Instead of that energy draining you, let it uplift a different area of your life. And most importantly and lastly, remember that if you're going through a breakup right now and you use all these eight to nine steps, you are sitting down to work on yourself and maybe, just maybe if you work enough on you, at some point in the future, you will attract somebody that sees a whole new, better part of yourself. There was a part of you that attracted this relationship. You grew enough for it to end. You're growing even more after the breakup, which means you can only attract somebody even better because now you know what you will not tolerate 
Now you know what you will tolerate. Now you've chosen how to love yourself. Now you've chosen to put yourself first. Now you've spent time on giving to you. So you know what that looks like in the next relationship that will come your way because you will. You will fall in love again. And I know right now you're saying, no, Shazman, I can't. I'm in so much pain. But I promise you, after doing these steps and giving yourself the time, it's not in a week, it's not in two weeks. Your journey might be a three week journey, but keep working through it. And I promise you, you will feel better. Leave me a comment. Let me know how you've gotten through a breakup. Let, it, let me know why you went through a breakup in your relationship. Let me know how you grew past your breakup because your comments could leave somebody else that's more quiet, feeling even more empowered. Thank you for watching this video with me. I hope these steps help you. Don't forget, we drop an episode every single Thursday. Grab your coffee, grab your tea, always show up with a notebook because maybe this session, this breakup session is something a friend could use and you'd be able to even share this video with them. Don't forget to subscribe, to like. I love receiving the love in the comments from you as much as I love doing these videos for you. So till next week, bye.